Hi everyone, welcome back to the ESL Server tutorial. In this episode, we're going to talk about base stations. We're going to walk through the uh, basics of using base stations and go on to even more advanced topics as the video goes on. So let's start with the concept of the base station. I have a base station on my desk here in front of me. The base station is a wireless device. Basically what it is, is a uh, sort of like a, a link between the cabled computer giving the commands and the wireless ESLs which have to receive the commands. These two communicate with a wireless protocol most similar to Zigbee. That is a low power, high efficiency uh, radio wave signal that uh, operates in the 2.4 gigahertz band, the same as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And that is important because in one of the more advanced topics, we're going to talk about interference. Basically, what the base station does is throughput all of the commands that the ESL server gives to the ESLs. So, in order to talk to the ESLs, we need to connect to a base station. Now, I've already started the ESL server software. And right now I am in the base station tab, the most top left corner, you can click base stations. And this screen allows you to control all of your base stations. If you have a store with several thousand labels, you probably will have a couple of base stations. In this tutorial, we're going to use one base station. If you press find, the ESL server will send a discovery package all over the internet or over your intranet, your local uh, uh, network. And as you can see, we are at the uh, optical headquarters and there are a lot of base stations online. So which one do we need to pick? Well, there's a neat trick for that. Base stations have a unique address, a MAC address, and that address is printed on the bottom. And this, uh, uh, this base station has the MAC address ending with 0820. So that's what we want to connect to. So we look in our list, we see a list of IP addresses and names, and the names of base stations by default end with the last four digits of the MAC address. So ours was 0820. We can see it here in the list. We press select and we're automatically connected to it. That is the easiest way to connect to a base station. When you're connected, you'll see them appear in this list. This list gives you all of the basic information that you want to know. The IP address in your network, the MAC address of the device, the model, uh, the channel it is operating on, which is one of the more advanced topics that we're going to uh, cover the latest firmware version, the status, right now we're connected, and the number of ESLs. And there are 12 ESLs on this base station. And those are the basics. You press find, you click the one you need, it connects to it, and you're done. So those are the basics. Let's go to some of the more advanced options. Like I said, I pressed find to discover the base stations. This uses a couple of ports that some uh, system managers will close. So you need to ask your system manager whether he sees a device with the MAC address printed on the bottom of your device in his network. If he does, ask him for the IP address. We know in this case that we're connecting to 192.168.0.40, so let's disconnect from the base station for a second. I just select it and press the delete key on my keyboard. You type in the IP address, the port you're going to use. If you change the model type, it will automatically update the port that it by default uses. So if you haven't changed it, the EBS 40 model will use port 1002. IP address, port, model, we click add and here we go we're connected so that's how you connect to a base station that isn't discovered on the network now like i said the esls use a protocol 
most similar to Zigbee, which operates in the 2.4 gigahertz radio band, which is the same radio band that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth use. Since the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth channels can be congested in your situation, you want to use a channel that is less congested. You want all of the assignments from your base station to your ESLs to arrive quickly. So what we can do is we can select a base station and press energy scan at the bottom. The base station is now scanning on all the channels of the 2.4 gigahertz band to see how much traffic there is. As with Wi-Fi, there is a little bit of overlap between the channels. So we always have our label scan on channels 11, 15, 20, 25, and 26 by default. So let's look at each of them. 11, well, there's not that much traffic. There is quite a bit in 12 and 13 though. If you look at channel 15, it is super busy. We, we don't want to use that channel. Also, the neighboring channels of 14 and 16, and especially 17, are quite congested as well. So let's skip 15. Let's look at 20. Well, 20 has a couple of peaks. It is a little bit congested, but not that bad. It's about the same as 11. And channels 19, 18, 21, 22, the neighboring channels aren't that busy either. If you look at channels 25 and 26, we see a lot of constant traffic. So the same with uh, channel 15, we are going to skip those channels. Now, our base station is now on channel 11. And I think we're going to stay there. We don't want to use 25, we don't want to use 25, 26. We probably want to use either 11 or 20. So I'm going to keep ours on channel 11. If you want to change it though, if I were to go to channel 20, for example, I click the configuration at the bottom left. I can use the selector or I can just type it in and then I can apply it. In that same configuration box, if you want to change the name of your base station, say for instance, this is an EBS 40 near the cash register. Let's change the name to the EBS 40 on the register. Press apply. Oh, I think I went overboard with the length because the name is a local setting that we don't want to overwrite too far. There we go. Register is short enough. Then we can use base stations to actually tell us where they are physically. The PAN ID and LAN ID are very advanced topics. Basically what they mean is when you have labels that you want to make sure are always connected to the same base station and do not go roaming around finding other base stations, you can set a LAN ID on that base station. Uh, this is a hexadecimal value. So for instance, you can say one, two, three, four, but you cannot say QWER because those aren't hexadecimal digits. So everything between zero and F can be used. So you can use F, 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 and we can apply that. Whoop, our base station suddenly lost a couple of ESLs as well because of that change. So let's put it back on zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 zero is a catch all channel. The same goes for channel 11. That is also a catch-all channel for ESLs. If you lose ESLs and you've been changing LAN IDs and channels, the best way to get them back is to have one base station with LAN ID 0000 and working on channel 11. And that way, all of those labels will come back to that base station as long as they're in range. And the range is several dozens of meters, depending of course on how congested the traffic is and whether there is a lot of concrete or steel nearby. The same rules apply as with Wi-Fi, for instance. 
And those are all of the advanced topics of the base station. We have covered every single facet of it. If you run into any problems though, you can always contact Opticon support. There's a link in the description. I thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the other tutorials.